Well, I've been having a Monday today. And so I'm going to, if you were here earlier this morning for my 1030 class, I'm gonna actually go back and do problems one, three, four, and five again. And people ask for different ones of those. Uh, some of them won't be the same numbers, but I'm just gonna do one example of each one. And then I'll go on and look at what was supposed to be today's lesson. But anyway, so we're gonna get started here and we're gonna look at problem number one. So this is uh, what 10.2 part two, and this is problem number one. It says the hypotenuse of a right triangle is 2.5 units long. So we have a right triangle, which has one right angle. The longest side, which is called the hypotenuse, is 2.5 units long. The longer leg is 1.7 units longer than the shorter leg. So I'm gonna call the shorter leg X and the longer leg X plus 1.7 units, all right? It says find the lengths of the sides of the triangle, the shorter leg, the longer leg, and the hypotenuse. Okay, now we're dealing with a right triangle. The hypotenuse is always the longest side, and that is always the letter C. The other two sides are called the legs of the triangle, and they are called A and B. And from that, we get the Pythagorean theorem, which says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So for our problem, A is X, so we have X squared. B is X plus 1.7, so we have X plus 1.7 the quantity squared equals c squared, which is 2.5 squared. So now simplifying, x, the quantity squared is x squared, plus we've got x plus 1.7 times x plus 1.7, and that equals 2.5 squared. Let's see, 2.5 squared is 6.25, okay? So now we're gonna get x squared plus, foiling these together, x squared plus 1.7x plus 1.7x plus 1.7 times 1.7 equals 6.25. Combining like terms, these will go together and these will go together. We get 2x squared plus, let's see, 1.7 plus 1.7 would be 3.4x plus 1.7 squared is 2.89, and that equals 6.25. So now we're going to subtract 6.25 from both sides of the equation, and we get 2x squared plus 3.4x, and then we've got, what have we got, 2.89 minus 6.25, which is minus 3.36 equals zero. Well, now to clear the decimals, I'm gonna multiply both sides of this equation by 100. That's gonna give me 200x squared plus 340x minus 336 equals zero. Okay, so I've cleared out the decimals. Oh, but now I see that all my coefficients are even, in fact, I think that four is a common factor of all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce it back down. I'm gonna divide each term by four. So what is that gonna give me? That's gonna give me 50x squared plus, let's see, 340 divided by four is 85x. And then 336 divided by four is 
minus 84 equals zero. So now I'm gonna take this and go to the next page. 50, 85 minus 84. 50x squared plus 85x minus 84 equals zero. Let's double check. Okay, so now we're ready to plug it into the quadratic formula where A is 50, B is 85, and C is negative 84. Okay, so X equals negative 85 plus or minus the square root of 85 squared minus four a C all over two A. So X is negative 85 plus or minus the square root of, let's see here, 85 squared is 7,225. And then we've got a minus times a plus times a minus, which is gonna give us a plus four times 50 times 84 is 16,800 all over 100. So then we've got, let's see, 16,800 plus 7,225 is 24,025 all over 100. Now, the problem didn't say anything about rounding off. So that tells me I should come up with some nice exact answers. Oh, and look here, I forgot my negatives. Okay. So now, if X is negative 85 plus the square root of 24, oh, you know what? We, what we can do, let's, let's find that square root. And then we can just take that into the next step. Okay, so let's find the square root of, let's see, square root of 24,025. Ah, yes, it's a nice number. Negative 85 plus or minus 155 over 100. Here we go. All right, now we're ready to split it up. So we've got X is negative 85 plus 155 over 100 or x is negative 85 minus 155 over 100. Well, negative 85, let's see, negative 85 plus 155 would be 70 over 100, which would be what? 0.7 units. Negative 85 minus 155 would be negative 240 over 100. And I could take that down to negative 2.4, but we're looking for a distance, so it can't be negative. So that means back up here, that this is 0.7 units, okay? This is 0.7 plus 1.7, which would be 2.4 units. That's a B there, okay? So our dimensions are 0.7 units, 2.4 units, and 2.5 units. So the shorter leg is 0.7 units, the longer leg is 2.4 units, and the hypotenuse is 2.5 units. Okay, now we're gonna go on to problem number three. So let's take a look at what we've got there. A huge suspended LED screen is the centerpiece of the place, a popular mall in Beijing, China. Find the length and width of a similar rectangular, rectangular screen if the length is five meters more than six times its width and the viewable area is 9,800 square meters. Okay, so we're talking about a rectangle rather than a triangle. And we know that the total area 
viewing area is 9,800 square meters. And the length is five meters more than six times the width. So the length is being compared to the width. So let's call the width X. The length is five meters more than six times the width. So it's five more than six X. Okay, so what that gives us is this picture. So we know the area is 9,800 square meters. The length is six X plus five and the width is X. So that means using the fact that the length times the width of a rectangle equals the area, that would give us the following equation. It would give us 6x plus 5 times x equals 9,800. Distributing the x, we get 6x squared plus 5x equals 9,800. Subtracting 9,800 from both sides, we get 6x squared plus 5x minus 9,800 equals zero. So here we have our equation. There's no fractions, there's no decimals. There doesn't appear to be any common thing we could divide out. So I think we're ready to go. So A is six, B is five, C is negative 9,800. From that, we get X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Continuing to simplify, x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, 5 squared is 25. We've got a minus times a positive times a negative, which is going to give us a positive. But we've got, let's see, what have we got here? We've got four times six times 9,800, which comes out to 235200. Zero, zero. And that's all over 12. So then we've got x equals negative five plus or minus the square root of 235200 plus 25 is 235225 all over 12. All right, now, this particular problem didn't say anything about rounding to the nearest tenth or hundredth, so I'm guessing that the square root of 235, 225 is going to be a nice number. Let's find out. Square root of 235, 225, it's 485. So x equals negative 5 plus or minus 485 over 12. I'm going to take that information and copy it on the next page. X equals negative five plus or minus 485 over 12. So X equals negative five plus 485 over 12, or X equals negative five minus 485 over 12. Well, negative five plus 485 would be 480. 480 divided by 12 would be 40, right? Negative 5 minus 485 would be negative 490 divided by 12. Well, again, I'm looking for a length or a distance, so that one's not going to work. So if x equals 40, I can go back here and I can say that the width is 40 meters and the length is 6 times 40, which would be 240 plus five would be 245 meters. So what we end up with is this, the width is 40 meters and the length is 245 meters. So there's problem number three. Alrighty, let's go on to problem number four. And let's take a look at it. It says 
A large city in the ancient world was square shaped. Measured in miles, its area numerically exceeded its perimeter by about 128. Find the dimensions. Now, I want to point out here it says numerically. Area would have square units, whereas perimeter would have just plain old units. So it's saying just the numbers, not the units, is, would make it true. All right. So we're dealing with a square. We're dealing with the area of a square and the perimeter of the square. Well, let's say that we make the length of the side of the square x. Okay. So then our picture would look like this. Well, the area would be x squared and the perimeter would be 4x, right? Area, length times width, one side times the other, perimeter, add them all four sides. Okay, so there we've got that information now. It says measured in miles, its area numerically exceeded its perimeter by about 128. So its area is equal to the perimeter plus 128. The area exceeds the, the perimeter. So adding 128 to the perimeter would make them equal. So there's our equation. Now we need to go in and solve it. And I don't remember which screen I'm on. So I need to go back here. OK. So I'm going to subtract 4x and subtract 128 from both sides. So now my equation becomes x squared minus 4x minus 128 equals 0. Plugging that into the quadratic formula, we've got what? a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is negative 128. So we get the following x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Now I want to point out, notice that negative 4 here, the whole thing is squared. The negative sign is inside. So here we're going to get x equals, well, negative times negative, that's positive 4 plus or minus the square. Oh, you know what? I forgot to divide that whole thing by what? 2a. So 2 times 1. OK. So 4 plus or minus the uh, square root of negative 4 squared, which is 16. And then minus times plus times minus is plus. And we've got what? Uh, four, 4 times 1 times 1, 28 which is 512 all over two. So x equals four plus or minus the square root of, let's see, 512 plus 16 is 528 all over two. And again, it, this one, it said to round to the nearest 10th. So let's take x equals four plus the square root of 528 over two x equals 4 minus the square root of 528 over 2. And then we'll go to our calculator. Parentheses 4 plus the square root of 528 all divided by 2. And I come up with 13.489. Well, to the nearest tenth, that would be 13.5. And that's miles. Okay. Then this bottom one, okay. I get negative 9.489, but again, we're talking a distance, so the negative answer doesn't work. So for this problem, uh, each side would be 13.5 miles. So the length and the width. Now, on this particular problem, let's take a look at the web assigned page. It says smaller value, larger value. Since they're the same, it doesn't matter which one you put where. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at problem number five. 
we have a picture surrounded by a mat and it tells us the length of the picture is X and up above here it says, uh, let's see right here, it says that X is seven inches. So over here, X is gonna be seven inches. And then it says Y is three inches. So along that side there, that's gonna be three inches. And it says that the matting, so that's this, uh, this green stuff all the way around the edge there, is of uniform width. So the width here is the same as the width there, is the same as the width there, is the same as the width there, all right? On my drawing that I'm gonna show you in a minute, we'll call that W. Okay, it says, the, how wide is the matting if the area equals the area of the picture, round to the nearest hundredth of an inch? Okay, now, so here's my drawing. I've got my picture, here's the sailboat inside, lovely looking sailboat in the mat all the way around. See my little red uh, lines with W's? That means the width, the width, the width, the width, all of that. Okay, the area of the picture Area of picture is 21 square inches. The area of the mat is equal to that. So it's also 21 square inches, okay? So the total area is 42 square inches because we know the area of the picture by taking seven times three. The area of the mat is the same. So we get two times the 21 square inches or 42 square inches. All right, now let's look at the big, the big picture, the picture and the map, the whole thing, okay? We know that this distance right here, the bottom of the picture is seven inches, but here, this is W and here, this is W. So this whole thing is two W plus seven. All right, now let's look over here. This is three inches. This is W and this is W. So this whole thing is 2W plus 3. So our equation becomes this. 2W plus 7 times 2W plus 3 equals 42. The length times the width equals the area of the mat plus the area of the picture. Okay? I'm gonna take that equation and recopy it on the next page. So we get 2w plus seven times 2w plus three equals 42. So that's our equation. Now we've gotta get it in standard form. So we're gonna foil, or multiply, distribute, whatever you wanna call it, 4w squared plus 6w, plus 14w plus 21 equals 42. Combining like terms, we've got 4w squared plus 20w plus 21 equals 42. Subtract 42 from both sides, we've got 4w squared plus 20w minus 21 equals zero. So we finally got our quadratic equation and there's no decimals, there's no fractions, there's no common factors, so let's go with it. A is four, B is 20, and C is negative 21. So W equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four A C all over 2A. W equals negative 20 plus or minus the square root of 400 plus, let's see, we've got 4 times 4 times 21 
which is 336 all over eight. And again, I'm taking a negative times a positive times a negative, so that gives me a positive, okay? W equals negative 20 plus or minus the square root of 736 over eight. Now, this problem from Web of Science said round to the nearest hundredth of an inch. So what that tells me is the square root of 736 isn't gonna be nice. So going on from there, I've got negative 20 plus the square root of 736 over eight negative 20 minus the square root of 736 over eight. So let's take that top one and we're gonna go parentheses, negative 20 plus the square root of 736, close up the radical, close up the whole numerator divided by eight. And I come up with 0 0.8911. Rounding to the nearest hundredth, 0 0.89. Doing the bottom one, I suspect that once again, yep, I get a negative 5.89 something. So again, our only answer that's correct is the 0.89. So going way back here, this width is 0 0.89 inches. Same thing here, same thing here, same thing there. All right, so there you have problems. What is it? One, three, four, and five from Friday's assignment. I'm gonna stop this recording and save it. And then I'm gonna make another recording that's of today's lesson, which we didn't have a chance to get to today. So we'll stop this and I'll be back.